Hey guys, it's Saf coming at you with another Raid Shadow Legends video and in today's video I want to talk about the one-shot team that is existing right, right now in Amius, uh, the Lunar Archon, the final boss of the Cursed City of Sintranos that you most people have been able to reach now if you've pushed just for the keys, if that's all you wanted to go for. And we're starting to see some strategies develop where you can absolutely one-shot this boss. It is insane and i was able to do this on stream uh last night i was up quite late with the, with the gang and we were working out how to you know what kind of minimum stats are we going to really need to do how does it really work and i was able to one shot this boss pretty much in four turns i say one shot i basically did it in four turns four actions of the fight so you can see the really good, cool thing about most of these content areas is we have rankings and that kind of gives us insights into how teams are working. You can see in my clan here right now, we've got a couple of people who've applied kind of the, the YST strategy as I'm calling it, where you've used a, a Venomage as a tank and then you're just trying to out heal it and control it and manage the alternate form until you eventually kill the boss. We can see also in the global leaderboards, other people have been doing that to more wildly variable successes. Now, there is a Chronum team that is, is appearing on this list. You can see someone from my cluster here has managed to do the Chronum solo strategy. And that's basically, I think, utilizing the Jamasa. I'm gonna hopefully be getting my hands on Chronum soon, finally. So I will be trying out various different strategies with Chronum to see what you would need to do that and probably do an actual guide on that team. But what I really wanna talk about today is a team concept that I first saw from Mad DJ. Now I haven't spoken to DJ, but he was the first person that I saw doing this. I was like, okay, I see what you're doing here. And he's essentially leveraging the power of Fushan's A1 with ally attacks to try and kill the boss very quickly. And then naturally Tainted took it another step further and has managed to get it down to two turns. And Tainted was hanging out on my uh, stream last night. We were talking about different sort of builds, what he was able to achieve and how he was able to do it. So he brought in a second Fushan uh, to be to, to into the mix and reduced his ally attacks by one also a turbold as well so he's managed to get it down to two turns it's kind of insane it really is it, it's mental um so i thought okay well maybe i can do this because i happen to have a six star fushan i don't have a plus four fushan but to be honest the blessing is more powerful than empowerment blessings at six star give you more stats and more effects than a plus four champion these days it's just a fact. So for me, not having the empowerment was a loss of stats, but it wasn't substantial. If I didn't have the six star, I couldn't do this. Um, so I'm going to show you exactly how it works and what I had to do to make this happen. And then I've got some screenshots. And at the end of the video, I'm going to put a clip of the stream moment when we finally managed to bring it down and actually one shot this boss. Now, whether or not this is a problem for the boss mechanic, because should a boss be one, one shot, I don't really want to talk about it in this video i think you know some people would have the opinion that it's too easy some people would have the opinion that only krakens to do this there's lots of different opinions i don't really want to talk about it to be honest it's just cool that i've been able to you know get on to essentially third world i feel like that guy who attends a wedding in jeans and t-shirt and thinks i really should have west addressed up better for this that's how i feel right now because i am like in the midst of all the the, the top giga krakens we've got callus we've got mad infinite here uh, I think Tainted is a pretty, pretty big Kraken as well. I feel like I am totally not in the right room. So it's kind of kind of nuts to really, you know, sit here and see how well I've done. So let me show you exactly how it works. The good thing about Lunar Archon is once you've done it once, you can completely replay it. That's why I can do this, beat it, and still produce guides for you guys to help you if you don't have these champions. I want to try and find lots of different champions and different variations that can beat it in this rotation over the next two weeks so that people who get here can have, like, maybe they don't have the Venom Age, but maybe they have someone like a Cold Heart. Maybe they have a Delva. Maybe Queen Eva can work. I want to test and build all these out and see how it works. So there's lots of different guides and options available to you. The way this team works is pretty straightforward. We're using Ghost Spawn's A3 to provide us an increased attack with a guaranteed decreased effect. We need the increased attack to empower our Fushan. Then we're using Roxam here because we have a six star Roxam. It's a very important factor. I'll talk about that in a second. And then we're using her to place Weaken. So now we have decreased defense and Weaken. Then we have double ally attack and we're making sure Fushan is last in the team order. That's very important. With the Farrakhan, the fact we're able to also leverage an increased crit rate and an increased crit damage, which means that we can drop our Fushan's stat requirements down considerably. 
Longbeard is also then going to come in and do an ally attack. Gets 20% bonus damage. That's why he's going second. I want the kill to happen when the, the boss is on the lowest HP because masteries are going to give us more damage, right? Fushan is going to be having masteries where he deals more damage if the target is below 40% HP. So we really want Longbeard to go second so that we leverage that ability. We also need Farrakhan to go first so that everyone else has the increased crit rate buff. And then Fushan is coming in. And what makes Fushan do this? is his A1 has a 25% chance of placing an extra hit. Now, this isn't a one-time effect. This is a repeat attack. So what that means is you can do this over and over and over again. It keeps rolling the 25%. As long as it successfully succeeds, it rolls it again. So you can repeat this. It's going to happen four, five. It could technically happen up to nine times. The probability is almost impossible, but it absolutely can. And it does insane damage. Why? Because we have a six-star crushing rend. So... The boss is quite tanky and we have to do everything we can. So let me just show you what I mean. This does take a lot of attempts. It's not a it's not a guaranteed run. I had to run this probably somewhere in the region of 100 to 250 times. We also don't have a booked rock sam. So this is essentially what I was doing on stream last night. We have to run this over and over and over again just so that we get everything to line up. So here's the concept. This is the first ally attack. You'll see the damage now from Fushan. That was a pretty weak attempt, but if we run this again, you'll see the damage that Fushan deals if he procs 700,000. One A1 was 700,000. So what we're really looking to do is try and find the RNG where Fushan is going to hit more than one time, because that is how we beat it in one go. Because what we're doing is we're essentially trying to activate his repeat attacks on the A1. We didn't get any that time, and we can see here, if we can just, I'm just going to try and run this until I get one that has an actual repeat attack. And it is a bit frustrating, but this is a world record attempt team. This isn't a farm team. And essentially the boss doesn't need farming, so it doesn't really matter. I only have to do this once and it's going to change next rotation. There's that double hit, see? So you can see that we've got two, two times 386 thousands and then we can really chunk it. So you see the difference there. We had a few extra hits and that really made a difference. To get it to work, you actually need to have all the stars aligned. It's not simple. Not having a plus four is going to push it down a little bit because you do lose access to that 30% bonus crit damage, 10% extra crit rate. There's about 500 attack that I'm, I'm down on. So I am down on some stats that a plus four would have. But the key thing is it has to be a six star. And I'm going to explain exactly how that works now. So that's essentially what you're doing. You're rolling it over and eventually everything will work. You'll get enough attacks. You probably need something in the region of like six repeat attacks over two ally attacks. So what is essential to make this work? Well, you need a six star Fushan. It's absolutely essential because you need the crushing rend. And you also, the reason why I've got Roxam in here, she's six star, which means I have a six star cruelty, which is also essential. Now, if you head over to hellhades.com, you can find all of the City of Sintranus requirements um, across all of the different encounters. So we can obviously look at Amius the Lunar Archon. And the key thing you need to take away from this view here is the defense number that the boss has and the speeds. So he's sitting on 11,000 defense. That is reducing a lot of your incoming damage. So really, the goal that you have available to you here is to try and destroy as much of that defense as you can before your Fushan takes an A1. And that is what we're doing here. Because we've got a decreased defense, we're immediately taking 60% of the defense away. Then because we've got cruelty stacking, by the time that Fushan does his second ally attack, we've destroyed 16% of the boss's defense. Then we've also got Crushing Rend. That's ignoring a further 35% defense. And when you look at the builds, he's also in Savage Cruel. That's ignoring another 30%. And he's got Helm Smasher. So if all the stars align, we essentially get to about 92% or 90% ignore defense, which is why it's so important that you have to have a six-star Fushan and ideally a six-star Cruelty. Otherwise, you just, you're just not going to be able to get the damage output you need from your Fushan. So let me just show you a couple of the builds here. Um, Ghost Spawn isn't really built for damage. We have him though at 258 he has to be the fastest in the team roxam i have tried to build for some damage but in all honesty she's not really going to provide much damage output in this it's not really going to happen but at 257 speed just before the ghost spawn then we'll have the farrak in the fat farrak in the fat is coming in third and he's running currently at 256 speed the speed tune doesn't need to be special you could go up another 10 speed just have to be faster than the boss again he is not built for any real damage he was built in my old uh fire knight team i've kind of broken it to make this possible because i haven't been running fire knight hard i'm probably going to rebuild it now that i've got creatine uh we've also got longbeard here longbeard is going at 252 speed so again after the farrakin again he was built for damage we have got lower crit rate because we're going to get the crit rate buff anyway he was built for finite hard and then finally the damage stats and this is where it's all important 
the Fushan. We'll have a look at the stats in a minute. But Masteries, he is in Helm Smasher. We are taking things like Heart of Glory with full HP. We get 5% more damage. We are taking Methodical. Every time he repeats his attack, it increases the damage of Methodical. We are taking Bring It Down. He's got higher max HP. You want to try and get as many multiplication effects as you can. He's fully booked. Crushing Rend is the key bit because look how many stats I'm going to gain. 750 attack, 38% crit damage, and 15 speed. That's, that's more than Empowerment. Blessings are better than Empowerment. Getting a 6-star soul is more valuable than having 4 of the same champions. That's just the way the system works now. But the most important thing is we're going to ignore 1% for every 10 levels. The boss is 350, so you ignore 35% of the defense. On top of Savage Cruel, which is another 30%. On top of the Helm Smasher, on top of Cruelty, we're stacking it all up. But the build you need is going to be big. It is a big build. It is 8.5k attack, 343% crit damage. It's not the craziest build because if you look at a lot of arena teams, this is done with like 250 speed as well, right? It's not it's not a massive build, but it is quite a big build to have in Savage Cruel for this, you know, 8.5k, 343% crit damage. It is quite big. So those are the stats. We're stacking it up and then we're just repeating it over and over again. So like I said, I want to give shout out to people who came up with this team. This isn't my original team. I just, this is the way that I've done it and how I got to world, world tier three at the moment. Uh, DJ was the first person I think that, that actually came up with this idea. The first result that I saw on the leaderboard. And uh, I want to do a big shout out to Tainted for coming onto stream and helping assist in terms of comparing my build to his build so that I could get an idea of how far I am, talking about the best way to set it up, talking about different things you can use and variations to use. Uh, it was really, really cool. I'm going to just pop up on the screen now his actual successful run. So you can see here, actually, he's quite lucky he didn't hit any sort of like um, sort of auto detection of bugs because he's killed it in one second. He has just one shot. He's gone ghost spawn into ally attack. And the clock kind of stops the moment the, the game engine records that death is going to be happening, not actually at the point of dying. That's why it's only one second, even though we've got all these ally attacks. But you can see when you've got double Fushan, it's doing 3.7 million. He just ha you just have to roll it multiple times, right? It took him an hour or an hour and an hour and a half, something like that, to get this to work of clicking and running through. Now I had to do mine manually because Roxanne doesn't like using A3 on auto, but you can absolutely do this like on on just like basically basically cutting play auto play auto play auto and you'll eventually get it but two turns i don't think anyone can beat two turns at the moment there is potentially a one turn team but that is going to be extremely difficult so you know fair play this might be the 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 world record for the current rotation of Amius. but this is the team that he ran and that fushan was built insane it was like a 400 percent crit damage as well so that's how he could drop the extra ally attack uh, he also was 100% crit rate. I wasn't. The empowerment helps you there with the crit rate. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick a clip at the end of this video of the stream highlight when we actually finally killed it. It took me off guard because I was I, at that point I was about 120 runs in after about an hour of auto clicking. I got so close multiple times. We got to like 4% two times in a row. We were trying to see if we could fit in Soul Reap. Didn't quite work, unfortunately. So um, it wasn't wasn't great. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to stick that clip at the end of this video. But thanks, guys, for watching this video. Um, I'm pretty impressed that I've managed to pull this together. I will be doing more videos around how to be Amius, different teams testing different champions. I'm pretty sure Delver could be quite a good champion for this as well. But thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video and check out the clip. So that's the problem. What if you put Fushan in Relentless? Well, Fushan has never taken a turn, so that's not going to help. Fushan here never takes a turn. That's the point. Oh, we've done it! We've done it! Boom! Just... Yes! Oh. I can feel like a kraken for one day. I'm a whale. Oh. Yes! Yes! Yes!